so it has shifted and the main shift uh, happened in terms of choice of treatments since we spoke last i think we have now got at least one new um anti cd20 monoclonal antibody um which is ofatumumab it's a self administered subcutaneous injection which patients can take in their home environment and it offers an advantage uh, in terms of travel to hospital the second development we have noticed during the pandemic years is the relationship of covid vaccine the efficacy of vaccine response and choice of treatment i'm sure that would be covered but also a shift moving away from previous use of alentuzumab for example to early use of ocrelizumab in uh, actively relapsing multiple sclerosis higher a proportion of patients going on oral mevenclad which is cladribin for first line treatment failure or, and as an alternative to high efficacy therapy the main change in the landscape which i think will appear um soon is the brutin uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor class of drugs now so far we have different kinds of approach in a way to different phenotypes of multiple sclerosis so uh, for example for relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis we have a wide array of treatment and we can either follow escalation policy or induction policy in terms of treatment and we have several options to choose from uh, we have since our last conversation approval of sipunimod or mesent for using secondary progressive disease which adds to previously approved use of beta interferon 1b in europe but not in north america and we have a established treatment of ocrelizumab in active forms of primary progressive multiple sclerosis however the new development is introduction of a drug uh, which is probably brought forward uh, to this year by sanofi and there is also a product under development by mark which actually looks into the biology of him is slightly differently and it's an inhibitor of brutin's uh, tyrosine kinase and what it has shown the the preliminary data that regardless of phenotype the treatment works very well across all three groups of patients so the treatment works for relapsing remitting patients of course but also for active secondary progressive and active primary progressive multiple sclerosis this is really a big shift in the treatment paradigm because when we diagnose a patient with multiple sclerosis we tend to phenotype them into different groups whether it's relapsing remitting primary progressive or active secondary progressive and then of course we try to establish activity and then go for a short list of treatment and of course there is no short list in primary progressive is only ocrelizumab for active primary progressive disease however with brutin tyrosine kinase inhibitor uh, coming in the horizon as a potential choice you do not have to be rigid about the classification of active versus non active multiple sclerosis and relapsing remitting versus progressive multiple sclerosis because the treatment seems to be effective for most uh, phenotypes and there may be an advantage of using the drug in relapsing remitting because of its proven efficacy in progressive disease so i think it would be a big shift the second move in the landscape a therapeutic landscape of multiple sclerosis is autologous uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplant or hsct that seems to be moving forward to sometimes as the preferred treatment in patients uh, because they feel that offers them a realistic option of a cure uh, there are some data which have come out in past year or two uh, it's not without risks uh, there have been occasional fatalities but non ablative form of hematopoietic autologous stem cell transplant may be gaining ground if um 
patients see it as a potential cure. But due to the logistics of treatment, it's not likely to be the first line or the most widely used intervention. My personal view is we would be using more effective treatments early on and possibly going for uh, either Bruton styrosine kinase inhibitor or more effective oral therapies um, using newer S1P modulators like Ponisimod, which has recently been approved in UK, or Cladribine or Mevinclad, which is widening its potential use uh, with additional third or fourth cycles of treatment beyond the first two annual cycles in the coming months.